second, if I may, sir, are you concerned about members of Congress that may have used information they learned on updates to sell stocks and profit off of this? I'm not aware of it. Uh, I saw some names. I'm not. I'm, I know all of them. Uh, I know. Uh, everyone mentioned uh, Diane Feinstein, I guess, and, and uh, a couple of others. I, I don't know too much about what it's about, but I find them to all be very honorable people. That's all I know. And they, and they said they did nothing wrong. I, I find them, the whole group, very honorable people. Yeah, please. Well, Mr. President, so the whole group would include Richard Burr, the head of the Intelligence Committee, and it also would include Senator Kelly Loeffler. And so the question is whether or not they should be investigated for that behavior. Well, it also includes Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat. You didn't mention her name. Why didn't you mention her name? And I think she's a very honorable person, by the way. So I'm not saying, but so you know, it's senator, interesting that you senator, mention two people, so but you don't mention one that happens to be a Democrat. Senator, any senator, should they be? I don't know because I'd have to look at it, possibly, but I find them to be honorable people. Yeah. Okay, first off, elephant in the room. Yes, that was Sean Spicer sitting among the reporters asking the president questions. And yes, Donald Trump pretended like he'd never met the guy because he is a totally normal human being. Now, Spicer is referring to Thursday evening's bombshell stories, exposing both Republican Senators Richard Burr and Kelly Loeffler for having sold up to $1.7 million and $3.1 million in stocks, respectively, while they were receiving private briefings, but publicly reassuring the whole country that everything was fine and we should totally definitely trust Donald Trump to guide us through this. For example, Burr wrote an op-ed on February 7th in which he assured the public that, quote, the United States today is better prepared than ever before to face emerging public health threats like the coronavirus. No matter the outbreak or threat, Congress and the federal government have been vigilant in identifying gaps in its readiness efforts and improving its response capabilities. And yet, while he was comforting us that everything was gonna be totally fine, NPR obtained a recording from February 27th in which the Senate Republican reportedly gave a VIP group at an exclusive social club a much more dire assessment of the economic impact of coronavirus. He said, there's one thing that I can tell you about this. It's much more aggressive in its transmission than anything we have seen in recent history. It is probably more akin to the 1918 pandemic. As for Loeffler, who I feel like I should also add is married to the CEO of the New York Stock Exchange, while she was busy selling up to $3.1 million in holdings, she was literally making videos assuring Americans about just how strong the economy was. I wanted to give you an update on the coronavirus situation following a meeting today that we had at, at, in the Senate with the President, the Vice President and Secretary Mnuchin. We talked in the meeting today about some additional responses that the administration is looking to take to make sure that consumers are protected, that we have all the medical testing that we need, and that the economy stays strong. The good news is the consumer is strong, the economy is strong, jobs are growing. Our president has done a fantastic job making sure that we're in the best position to manage through this situation. Pretty amazing when you consider that she wanted no part of the economy she was so busy touting. But despite these pretty significant stock sales, Trump felt like the real story here was Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein. Now, in fairness, Senator Feinstein also sold some holdings of stock in a pharmaceutical company, but there are a few important points to note regarding Feinstein's story here. First, her holdings are in a blind trust. Second, she also purchased stock at the same time, so it doesn't follow the same pattern of dumping all of her holdings to cash in before the crisis. Consider that Senator Burr sold off 33 different stock holdings, liquidating a vast share of his portfolio. Third, she wasn't pretending that that everything was all good on Twitter like the others to give some false sense of security that she didn't believe in. Feinstein actually tweeted several times near the time of her sale and at no point did she seem to be downplaying the severity of the virus like the others. And finally, she sold low. The stock price when she sold was around $22 a share versus just over $20 a share now. So again, not the same pattern of cashing out on a stock before it plummets. Of course, with that said, if it does turn out that she's in the same boat as her Republican counterparts, then she should be held to the exact exact same standard as the rest of them, because if any congressperson or senator was using privileged knowledge to profit while the rest of us were left in the dark, regardless of party, then they don't deserve to hold their positions. But for Trump really to lead with Feinstein, as if she's the story here, is a testament to the extent to which he's acting in bad faith. I mean, even Tucker Carlson came out and breathlessly called for Burr's resignation without pretending that somehow Feinstein was the lead here. She may have seen the news reports this afternoon, the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee sold more than a million dollars in stock in mid-February after learning how devastating the Chinese coronavirus could be. 
He had inside information about what could happen to our country, which is now happening, but he didn't warn the public. He didn't give a primetime address. He didn't go on television to sound the alarm. He didn't even disavow an op-ed he'd written just 10 days before claiming was America was, quote, better prepared than ever for coronavirus. He didn't do any of those things. Instead, what did he do? He dumped his shares in hotel stocks so he wouldn't lose money. And then he stayed silent. Now, maybe there's an honest explanation for what he did. If there is, he should share it with the rest of us immediately. Otherwise, he must resign from the Senate and face prosecution for insider trading. There is no greater moral crime than betraying your country in a time of crisis. And that's appeared, that appears to be what happened. Of course, for Trump, it could have something to do with the fact that Loeffler's Senate seat is up in 2020 in Georgia, which has been trending increasingly purple, and Burr is from North Carolina, another swing state. And because he only views anything through the lens of politics, he'd be more likely to coddle Republicans guilty of insider trading during a global pandemic than to ever do the right thing. And by the way, Trump's remarkably soft stance might also have something to do with the fact that we have no idea what Trump and his family's own holdings look like. And I'm not saying that they did or didn't do anything similar to what Burr or Loeffler did, but I am saying that I would be exactly 0% surprised. So while certain Republicans just got filthy rich on the heels of an economic crash that they were busy promising you totally, definitely wouldn't happen, I wouldn't exactly look to Trump for any moral leadership here. Because in the realm of people using the crisis to look out for themselves, Donald Trump is at the top of that list.